Welcome to the Hockey Writers What's Cracking, a weekly show with our top Seattle Kraken writing crew, bringing you the latest news, rumors, trades, player grades, game results, and much more. From training camp to the playoffs, from the first ever puck drop to their future rivalries, our team covers everything that happens with the Kraken. So sit back, relax, and get ready to find out what's cracking. Welcome to the THW What's Kraken show, hosted by me, Tom Pepper, Sean Raggio, and Adam Kierzenblatt. Presented by the Hockey Writers, we talk Seattle Kraken hockey every week on iHeartRadio, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to check out our written work at thehockeywriters.com and follow the show on Twitter at, at What's Kraken Show, as well as at Raggio9124 and at Adam K. Blatt. We are back for, I, I can't even believe this, episode 22 now, so... Uh, this is exciting. Again, we got another week with not a ton of crack and hockey to talk about, but uh, we do have some exciting things to discuss. But before we get into that, how have your weeks been and what have you been up to? You want to go first, Sean? Yeah, uh, say, same old, same old with me. I, you always ask me the question and I always forget what I did the past week. <laughs> Just uh, real relaxing aside from work. Nothing, nothing really new going on. Glad, glad crack and hockey is finally back. We have some... Uh, some stuff to write about some stuff to talk about yes it is exciting for sure how are you adam well i'm good i haven't watched any hockey in what nine days because <laughs> not only were the kraken suspend postponed but the canucks were and the vancouver giants were so i was like in this like nine day void of nothing but um we got to give a shout out because on our on our on the youtube channel we do have a comment from uh the samurai foodie from a couple of years or a couple of weeks ago talking about how he loves the channel and saying, what did you guys expect for the first year expansion? It's like, well, we expected a little bit better than this, you know, hopefully. So uh, thanks to everybody for watching the show and make sure to leave some comments so we can, uh, you know, interact with you guys uh, after the fact. Yes. It would definitely be great to read some comments, especially with the crack and hockey missing. Um, It's good to have it back and it's good to be able to talk again. My week has been pretty, uh i don't know i really haven't done that much honestly we're here in lockdown so it's not like i can go many places but uh, i've been doing the hockey writers podcast still and that's started to pick up and it's going really well so you can check that out every weekday monday to friday and uh yeah that's about it i'm like you sean not not a ton going on (laughs) yeah dog days of the season yeah yeah all right let's jump into our first topic then so uh according to daily faceoff uh, Matty Beniers has been invited to play for Team USA at the Olympics. So this, he's obviously the first ever draft pick in Seattle crack in history. And this is pretty significant uh, for, for someone like him who has actually had a lot of international success already as a young player. He won gold as the youngest player on Team USA at the World Juniors last year. He was on the World Juniors team this year, but of course that got canceled. He also won bronze as the only draft eligible player on Team USA at the IIHF World Championship in 2021. So just him, if he ends up going to the Olympics, uh, this is just going to expand on his incredible international resume already. And he's only 19 years old, so it's pretty incredible. But one of the things that could stand in the way of this is the Michigan Wolverines, uh, who are having a stellar season and will already be missing Owen Power to Team Canada. And Maddie Beniers is obviously one of their big stars. So I'll ask you, um, Adam, do you think Michigan would let Matty Beniers go off to the Olympics? Well, with the Owen Power situation, it's kind of you let both of them go or you let neither of them go. So we did see this uh, last year at the World Juniors where Michigan told uh, Owen Power that he couldn't attend the uh, World Juniors, um, even though they let uh, some other players go. Uh so this will be interesting because they've already missed, you know, two to three weeks with the world juniors before it was postponed. So if you're Michigan, do you allow your players to go and miss more time, miss more school and miss more games to compete for your country? Or do you keep them at home? Um, my understanding of the situation just based off of the reports is that uh, the NCAA has given permission for the players to go. So I don't know if Michigan does have the power or not to stop him, but uh, we'll see because if they do allow him to go, Matty Beniers is probably their number two center 
uh, on Team USA. Which is pretty incredible to think. I mean, with the World Juniors canceled, it almost seems like all the all the big names in the World Juniors are just going to the Olympics now. And Matty Veneers is having a great season with the Wolverines. He's got 26 points in 22 games, so he would certainly be missed if he does uh, end up making the trip overseas. Uh, but for you, Sean, I want to ask you, obviously, Veneers has a lot of international experience, but he has never been to the Olympic Games, which is pretty much the biggest world stage you can get on for athletics. Do you think he would benefit from playing in the Olympics at this age? I think so. As you said, it's a grand stage. And I think it goes a bit further on an emotional level. You never really know if you're going to get this opportunity again. Look at Steven Stamkos. You know, he should be there, but he can't. And I think that any experience against the best, in this case, yeah, some of the best players representing your nation is something that definitely he should take advantage of if he has the opportunity. Yeah, it, it would be quite a special thing. Obviously, representing your country is a major thing at the Olympic level, and it's unfortunate that uh, all the NHL players missed out on it because I think a lot of us were really looking forward to seeing uh, a, a lot of these guys playing together. I was, especially me personally, I wanted to see McDavid and Crosby together, but uh, that's not going to happen this year. But hopefully some other way, maybe a, a world championship or something, we'll, we'll get to see that sort of thing. But for now, uh, we could see a lot of these young guys. And if Matty Beniers does end up going on to Team USA, it'll be very exciting for Kraken fans to watch because he is one of the main future pieces of this team. So with that, we can jump into our second discussion uh, about which Kraken could have the most trade value. This is obviously not the way the season were there the, the the way the season was supposed to go for the Kraken or the way they were expecting it to go and it, it does I mean playoffs are pretty much you'd have to be like the 2019 St. Louis Blues and just have an incredible turnaround if they wanted to make it into a playoff spot at this point they're pretty far behind so they're probably going to be sellers at the draft and we talked about this before the start of the season how there's a major off season coming up with free agency um, and some incredible draft prospects on the table as well. So uh, w when we look at who could potentially be traded for the Kraken, the three of us have each picked a player that we, we, we think could maybe be on the move or could be an option for the Kraken to move. So I'll go to you first, Sean. Who do you think has the most value in a trade for the Kraken? I'm going to say Alex Wenberg. I think he's got a very movable contract. And on a cup contending team, I think he could be a very valuable 3C um, I think he's good for the Kraken, but they really should be looking to acquire assets and moving their focus to the draft. I'm not saying tank. I would not put that out there in any capacity, but you can see with the team they have now, they're not winning games. They put up a good fight against Colorado last night, two nights ago from when this drops, but they're just not winning games. So they, they should just move their focus to the draft. Don't bring people in. Look to acquire assets when you can. Yeah, and that's he's obviously a piece that could be moved. Alex Wenberg is, I mean, he hasn't really been a huge player for the Kraken this year, but he's been a steady, consistent uh, producer, and that's what playoff teams will be looking for at the trade deadline. So that is a possible move. Do you have any comments on that, Adam, about potentially moving Alex Wenberg? Um, the big issue with Wenberg is his contract. You know, he's got a couple more years at four and a half million, so if you are going to trade him. You need to, the opposing uh, team needs to give you money back and, and that might reduce the prospect level that you can get. But Wenberg has shown that he can uh, play well and be that even be a successful second line center in the league. So if you can get something for Wenberg at this point, that would maybe be great because you know, you have Matty Beniers coming in uh, as early as late this year. Um, to fill that uh, second uh, line center role or even that first line center role. Yeah, that's a great point with Beniers. When Beniers comes in, a center spot will have to open up for him. So maybe they can move one of those center pieces like Wenberg at this year's trade deadline. Uh, our next player that I picked out that could be a potential trade option is, this is controversial, don't necessarily know if I'd go with this for sure, but Jordan Everly is someone that I would consider moving. He leads the Kraken right now with 23 points in 32 games, and he's really having a stellar year. He's 31 years old, and he has two years left on his deal at 5.5 million AAV. So he's got a solid contract he's producing, and he's getting a bit older. 
Now, for the Kraken, who are a team that are really trying to build a foundation for a future, I don't know how important it would be for them to keep Everly if they could swap him out and get some high draft picks this year with a, a loaded draft class and open up some more cap space for uh, a huge free agent pool that's going to be available this year. And I'm sure there will be quite a few players who would be excited to go to Seattle and almost have a second chance to get this fan base into it because the, the roster could look very different next season. We already know Ron Francis has left a ton of cap space aside specifically for this off season. And Jordan Eberle could, could be one of those guys that you could move and get some nice assets for who is an aging player and will not be obviously part of the long-term future of the Kraken. He does have a 16 team, no trade list. So it might be, little bit difficult to work out a deal, but I'm sure there are playoff contenders that Everly would be open to going and playing for uh, that would potentially cough up something nice for the Kraken so that they can continue building on the young uh, potential of this roster. So that was my take on Everly. Do you have any thoughts on that? Do you want to go first, Sean? Yeah, I think that, you know, it wouldn't be a bad thing. I think it would speak towards where they see themselves going in the next couple of years because he does have some term there. And he is one of their better players. So if he's gone and you're bringing in assets, then you're really committing to a plan for the future, which given that it seems like this was either going to go one of two ways. They were either planning to make the playoffs or planning for the future. And it's just another step towards unveiling the plan that they were going to hit, look towards the future this whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts, Adam, before we move on to our third player? Um, at 31 years old, he doesn't really fit the model of what this franchise needs. They don't really need those aging superstars. They need those up and comers, those 22, 23 year olds. And uh, yeah, it makes sense to uh, try to sell high on uh, Jordan Everly because I know teams, maybe even his old team, like the Islanders uh, really lack that depth scoring and might, uh, might a ha- give you a handful of assets uh, for him because he's a proven player. Yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting to see if that happens. Of course, he is leading the Kraken in points right now, so I wouldn't be betting everything. He is playing very well for the Kraken. This is, he wouldn't be traded at all because he's underproducing. It's actually because he's producing very well, and you could get some good assets for him. So that is a potential person I have. But Adam, you want to take it away with uh, the third person we could see potentially getting some nice value in a trade? Yeah, so for the... Um... You know, in, in the NHL, you can't have two starting goaltenders. It doesn't work. So Chris Dreger makes a lot of sense. If the Kraken are going to uh, trade somebody, they can't trade Grubauer. I know they might want to, but his contract is just so overblown and uh, it's not good value. So you're not going to get anything back for him and you're going to have to take back money. But Chris Dreger, he's only making three and a half million over the next two seasons plus this season. So uh, two and a bit seasons. Now he hasn't had the best year. He's got an 892 save percentage, but the Kraken as a whole have not had a good year, but his career uh, save percentage is 0.922 in 47 games. That's pretty good. He's only 27 years old. So if you're a team like Edmonton who are having problems, you know, Miko Koskinen's going to be gone at the end of the year. And then you have Mike Smith and Stuart Skinner's not ready to come up or you're a team like Colorado who Kemper and uh, Pavel, Fran Kuz are both free agents at this year at the end of the year. Both these teams need goaltending. So you bring in Grubauer and it kind of solidifies your goalies for the next three years uh, at the minimum. You know, then you have time to re- restock the uh, prospect pantry there. They both have uh, players that are right shot defensemen or uh, forwards that the Kraken could really use. So if anybody's going to move at the trade deadline, I know he has a 10 team, no trade. Uh, list Chris uh, Dreger but if anybody's going to move that's the guy who has term after this year that I could see moving yeah and I mean we, he's really been underutilized in Seattle not necessarily fully due to Dave Haxtell's decisions Dreger was on the IR twice this season but this is a guy who has shown in the past he has a lot of potential to play really well he came off uh, some incredible seasons with the Florida Panthers when he headed over to Seattle And he is a guy that, like you mentioned, there are some teams who would definitely take a chance on him who could really help out in their goaltending situation. Uh, Sean, do you have anything to add about Drieger? Um, I think that in regards to Drieger, Decord's not ready as of now to be an an NHL backup. And 
um, I don't know who they would bring in to fill that role. I'm sure there are other options, but until I can see some of those options, I think they're going to hold on to him. But if they do get the opportunity to trade him for something, even a package of two second round picks, you know, I think that would be something they should look into. It's a value contract at this stage. Yeah. Yeah, no. and I mean this this goaltending duo is supposed to be one of the best in the league when the season started, and it really hasn't turned out like that. Uh, the Kraken have been really struggling in net this season, and you know maybe maybe they consider moving one of these guys, or maybe they hold off a little bit and see if maybe adjusting the team, putting some new players in front of them again, the off season uh, could have a lot of new players incoming, and they give them another chance uh, because this was supposed to be a pretty epic goaltending duo, and it has not turned out like that. I'm going to throw one thing uh, about trades. Um, and, you know, we are getting to that trade season. Remember that when you are on uh, social media to double check the username of the person reporting, because, uh, you know, even TSN and Sportsnet here in uh, Canada have um, been fooled by uh, Twitter accounts. So make sure to double check, you know, Take that extra two, three seconds, click on the profile and make sure that uh, it is really who is report. The reporter is who they say they are before uh, retweeting and tweeting out big, uh, big trades and big moves uh, in the coming months. Yeah. And uh, just another quick note, keep an eye out for anyone who's not normally an alternate captain to be having an A on their chest. I've heard two different anecdotal stories uh showing one was ryan whitney had an a in pittsburgh right before he was sent to anaheim and the other was keith jones got given an a and right away he knew he was going to be traded and he was traded right short thereafter so definitely keep an eye out on that it could be a, it's not confirmed but it could be a signal that one of these guys are going out the door oh man lots to keep an eye on and, and like adam said you got to watch out for especially mr booth he seems to be uh, the call for the most most of the time. So <laughs> make sure you're getting your sources right. All right, we can jump into the third and final section of the episode here. We're going to talk about which positions the Kraken need depth at. And specifically, we've highlighted right shot defensemen and scoring wingers. So in terms of right shot defensemen, the Kraken only have one right shot defenseman right now, which clearly you want to improve on. You want to have a, a better balance of that. And the top six is not performing as we expected. We, that's obviously clear with the way the season has gone and how they're just completely out of playoff contention. And even Ron Francis has said that he was surprised uh, by this team not really producing at the level that they were supposed to. So I'll ask you first, Adam, what do you think is more important for the Kraken to do here? Focus on right shot defensemen or, or trying to increase the scoring on the wings? Well, for me, it's uh, you need to get that right shot uh, right side figured out on defense. You know, you can't have Will Borgen as an everyday player. Uh, Kale Fleury, I'm not 100% sure how his development curve is going to go. Um, and then when, so when you're looking at that, you're looking at players, you want to go down that route. You know, a guy like uh, Colin Miller makes a lot of sense for next year. A guy like John Klinberg. But these are guys that, uh, you know, are older. So if we are looking into the draft, it's uh, Simon uh, Nemec, or Simon Nemec. He is a uh, Slovak player who is supposed to go in the top five. So depending on which teams are picking in the draft in the top five, he's 6'1", 192. He is a very good defenseman. He has some offense to his game. And if the Kraken are in that spot where, you know, they have a choice between Nemec or a guy like Matthew Savoy, and you go with the defense. You always build, in my opinion, you always build the defense first because uh, it's a lot easier to win games, you know, 2-1 than it is to win games 6-5. Um, so that's something to look out for. I, I think that we're confident in saying that the Kraken are going to have a top five pick. So that's one guy I would highlight if I'm the Kraken uh, as of right now. Yeah, there is definitely potential for the Kraken to have a top five pick. Um Season's not going well and it's kind of collapsed. So it actually could turn out to be a good thing the Kraken aren't doing well because they could pick up another great prospect on top of Maddie Beneers, who they got at last draft. So again, building on that young core could be a huge thing. Uh, but I'll ask you, Sean, what do you think is more important? Scoring wingers or getting a right shot defenseman? At this stage in the game, I'm going to say scoring wingers. 
I think they have a lot of defensemen in the pipeline. And yes, they're not right shot defensemen, but give guys shots and see if someone can make that switch because you're just, you're not really, you're not scoring goals and you're not exactly stopping goals either, but that's not entirely on the defense. That's also on the goaltending. So to me, they need guys who can put the puck in the back of the net. Yeah. And I mean, I, I've, yeah. Did you want to continue? I was in the immediate future. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's I, I put together a little, a little list here of some players that could be available to the crack. And if they do reach unrestricted free agency, they're set, to, their contracts are expect ex, ex, set to expire at the end of the season. So some right shot defenseman that could be on the table, Chris Letang, who I wouldn't expect is going to leave Pittsburgh, but he is going to be an unrestricted free agent. Uh, Adam already mentioned it. John Klingenberg, PK Subban, Colin Miller, Rasmus Ristolainen are some guys I could see the crack and potentially being interested in. We had uh, Colin Newby on the show the other time, and I did mention Rasmus Ristolainen could be a great piece for the Kraken just because of his physical nature and his hard hitting play, which is something the Kraken have suddenly started to lack, although this, the beginning of the season started out like that. And then in terms of wingers, you've got guys like Johnny Goudreau, Evan Rodriguez, who's going to be looking for a raise. Andrej Palat, who was in talks of being on the crack and from the expansion draft originally, would be kind of cool if he came and played with Yanni Gord. Riley Smith, Andre Burakovsky, Phil Kessel, David Perron, Alex Radulov. The list goes on. There's going to be a lot of options to pick from, so it's going to be exciting to see where the crack and put their focus and you know where they try to improve this team because there are a few areas that need some fixing. I think I heard that Perron, despite all the teams he's played on, has never signed a contract with anyone except for St. Louis, and then he's just bound, been on different teams because of trades. And as for John Klingberg, to paraphrase what I recall from the latest um, 32 Thoughts podcast, he wants to stay in Dallas, but he also wants to show that he's valued. You know, he mm-hmm. wants – because I, from what I've heard, he doesn't exactly feel that from, mm-hmm. you know, relative to some other players. And I think that part of that is because of the fear that Dallas has. They've given out big contracts to Jamie Benn and Tyler Sagan. And to no fault of their own, injuries have really, as they've gotten older, you know, curbed their uh, – I can't think of the word. But you know what I'm trying to say. So that's definitely going to be interesting to see what's going to happen with Klingberg and Dallas. Um, yeah. Um, you know, you talk to wingers, and uh, we we've, we've talked about this before. Riley Smith is a name that you uh, look at and it's like that, that name really makes a lot of sense that he could come to Seattle uh, because he's not staying in Vegas. They don't have any cap space. You know, they're over the cap for next year already. So if they can uh, back up the Brinks truck, like he's a Marvel uh, actor, uh, he might be a, he might look pretty good in a Kraken Jersey next year. And depending on how other injuries unfold and uh, when guys come off IR, they might have to move someone sooner than later before the playoffs for when Jack Eichel becomes healthy. I know Pacioretty just went down. I think Stone might be injured again. I, I don't remember the other name I heard, but they might have to do some uh, gymnastics there with the cap in the near future. It's, it's like it's like Tampa Bay. You know, Their players conveniently go down with injury at the right time and then are magically okay to play a day before the playoffs. So, you know, that it's not nothing, it's nothing new here with the, with Vegas. Oh man. (laughs) All right. Before we wrap up here, does anyone have any final thoughts, final words? Just to uh, go back to uh, talking about, you know, Michigan Wolverines, they were previously ranked sixth in the nation. They're now fourth. Just two spots ahead of them, Quinnipiac University Bobcats. Just wanted to rep the alma mater right there. Shout out to uh, Bobcats Hockey. All right. Anything from you, Adam? I just want to say that, you know, if you if you are looking at, uh, you know, weird stats and everything, uh, you got to feel bad for the Ottawa Senators. You know, they played one game since December 19th. All of their games are just getting canceled. They were supposed to play in uh, in Seattle. That got canceled due to COVID. So I know that we talk about, you know, the Kraken having a long layoff. One game between it's uh, January 11th and December. So between December 19th and January 13th, they're going to play one game. And hopefully more games won't get suspended. I know that Tim Stutzela just got put on the COVID protocol list and they're playing in Calgary and in Edmonton. Uh, that both have capacity restrictions. So it could be 
an entire month between when the Ottawa Senators play where they only play one game. That is nuts. That is nuts. Yeah, so there you go, Craig fans. It could be worse. Uh, hopefully, we do start seeing this these postponements, you know, settle down and we can just get back to normal life. But right now, obviously, we're dealing with unprecedented times and that's just the way it is. And it's hitting some teams harder than others. And I guess we got to be thankful that we get to watch more than one game a month when we watch Kraken. So, um, yeah, with that, I'll wrap it up. So thank you for tuning into this week's episode of THW What's Kraken. We hope you enjoyed the show and look forward to next week as we'll be breaking down any Seattle Kraken news and rumors that come up over the next few days. Again, make sure to check out our written work at thehockeywriters.com and follow the show on Twitter at, at What's Kraken Show, as well as at Raggio9124 and at Adam K. Blatt. From Tom, Sean, and Adam, this has been THW What's Kraken.